Welcome to our lecture about internet security, weakness and charges. Today we want to have a look back in the history of uh, security incidents of hackers and viruses. This is the last lecture in the uh, first chapter on risk analysis and computer crime. We already discussed how one can approach to describe and to acquire risk to make evaluation, to see whether it makes sense to uh, establish some security measures in a certain point or not. This depends from the risk. What happens if here is a break-in or a, a data lost or other things. Then we discussed a little bit a phenomenology of the uh, computer crime. People who is interested to do this, what's the motivation of the different group? More and more it is a criminal scene that acti active here because uh, it's uh, involved a lot of money and uh, every time this is attracting criminals. And today we want to speak about, ha about hackers, about security incidents and viruses. Let's start with looking back what is the history where the computer hacker scene arised from. And I already mentioned this in an earlier section, uh, in the 60s and 70s of the last century, there exist groups, hacker groups, the so-called freakers. And these were telephone hackers. In that time, you cannot imagine this, to make a telephone call was extremely expensive. One minute, one euro, or uh, if it's going abroad, then several euros. So the idea and the goal of this uh, uh, telephone hackers was to find weaknesses in the telephone system to uh, be able to make phone calls without paying for it. So they are searching for weaknesses of telephone charging systems, uh, and then they uh, tried out uh, these weaknesses to make phone calls. Of course, everyone knows that is criminal, but they had an ideologic idea and background, and this alleged uh, ideological background says freedom of communication is uh, a human right, it is a precondition for freedom of the humanity. You see that it's a little bit uh, overloaded, but it helps them to explain that these criminal things they are doing under this ideological uh, idea look not criminal. So in this, uh, uh, this uh, telephone hackers, they were organized by underground magazines, by, uh, for example, a famous was this uh, YIPL to TAP, the use international party line to uh, technical uh, to technical American party. This was a quite famous in the scene, a quite famous underground magazine. And in this under uh, in this underground magazine, they published uh, uh, constructions. They published procedures how to uh, misuse these weaknesses of this uh, billing system. So this uh, magazine describes construction for some special devices to outsmart uh, the charging, uh, some black box, some red box and others. And this was really considered dangerous. There was, from the chief editor of this uh, journal, there was an attack a fire raising in the house of the publisher of this magazine. So this damaged a lot of uh, so the, this, this, this telephone hackers by misusing the telephone system. They caused a large uh, damage. And so it seems that they were attacked. It could be an accident, but it could also be uh, this fire raising, could also be some uh, counter criminal thing. When <laughs> PCs came, it was in the 70s, in the 80s, last century, then this scene moved to the uh, uh, to an underground in uh, finding out weaknesses on PCs. So to, for example, the goal was to break in into computer systems. 
you will uh, several times hear this name, Kevin Metnick, was a world famous hacker. And he was sentenced already in 82 because of break in into telephone company, uh, Backbell, and uh, there he thefts manuals. And these manuals with a dis construction description of the charging system and others to get material for this, uh, to break into this uh, telephone system to outcharge this. So you see this movement from telecommunication to uh, PC, to attacking PC, uh, it could be seen uh, quite clear in this, uh, in this case. In 81, uh, the largest hacker association, CCC, the Cars Computer Club, was founded in Berlin, also uh, very early. And originally it was based in Germany and it was a German-speaking uh, community. But uh, meanwhile it, become, it became more and more international. So every year, this is organized since 1984, this uh, CCC, this Computer Cars Club, organized a conference between Christmas and New Year, the Chaos Communication Congress, the C3, and in this year, as a 30th uh, Chaos Communication uh, Congress, the uh, 30 C3, is held uh, on December 27 to 30 uh, in Hamburg. Uh, originally, CCC was placed in Berlin, but last year, in 2012, they moved to Hamburg. So there is the, uh, the headquarter. The, also, the CCC, for its hacker activities, use and uh, have an ideological justification uh, and they claim to implement uh, the implementation of human rights for worldwide and free information. That it is a human right for uh, worldwide and free information exchange. And computers, they have a lot of information, so everyone has the right to access the data and see the data, particularly those data that are uh, important for public life. Some spectacular action were done by uh, the uh, Chaos Computer Club. Uh, and the action every time has a scheme that some weaknesses are misused in software or in technical systems. And by misusing this weakness uh, to break in, to access data and others. So spectacular was in 80, 1984. In that time, there was uh, from telecom introduced uh, BTX service. BTX was uh, something uh, uh, what's now very usual with the internet was a technology that helps to give text messages and also for example to make some kind of online banking and this system uh, was misused uh, by Chaos Computer Club and they released a transfer, a bank transfer uh, from the Hamburger Sparkasse uh, with an amount of 134,000 uh, uh, Deutschmark. And then they published it and claim here, you see, uh, that's a weak system. We were able to, uh, uh, to release such a transfer. Another, uh, uh, another famous uh, uh, attack was <coughs> done in 87, as it was an a break in into the NASA network. NASA is this <coughs> world space a company, a famous world space company, of course, with a very strict security system <coughs> in the network. And these uh, hackers, they try to prove that they are more smart and that they are able to overcome even such strong, uh, such strong security measures. Uh, ten years later, 1989, the CCC uh, broke in the uh, uh, COMP, the COM128 encryption algorithm that was used in that time by uh, GSM SIMS. So it was a relatively weak security measure because the smartphones, the 
uh, mobiles had no uh, had, had no big computational power, and there was a problem with uh, with, with energy. So it was chosen a weak uh, security mechanism, and this was uh, this was uh, breaked uh, by CCC, and then they could overcome the GSM security uh, security measures. Uh, 2001, uh, CCC celebrated its 20. Uh, 20th birthday with an interactive light installation, a uh, double project blinken lights that turned uh, the building house des Leeros in Berlin into a giant computer screen. You know, that's close to the Alexanderplatz, this not a high building, but a higher building. 2008, a uh, Chaos Computer Club published uh, the fingerprints of the German Minister of Interest. It was the fingerprints of Wolfgang Schäuble, who is now Minister of Finances. And with this, they want to protest against the use of this biometric data into German identity card, for example, in the e-passport. So they uh, want to prove that it's not no much security, that they were able to get even the, uh, the fingerprint of a famous person like uh, the responsible minister, uh, federal minister, and they published this to show uh, it's uh, not a good idea to use, uh, to use bi biometric uh, data for identity cards. And uh, 2011, CCC published uh, an analysis of the Bundestrojaner software. This was our starting example in the lecture when we discussed uh, the problems around uh, internet security and uh, what's possible, what's uh, not possible.